Okay, welcome back to another video. We're going to uh, update our code now so that instead of having this demo at the top, we're going to have this edit button follow each wizard or each monster that we create. So just like the delete me is unique for each player on the list, we're going to have an edit which will populate the values in our modal box. So this button goes away and we're going to create copies of it down below. So we can go back up to our code and find our trigger here. Let's um, let's cut this out and let's move it down to where we're creating our code for each person. Okay, so I'm looking for all of these uh, HTML strings. We created a, a button earlier for delete and now we're going to create another one based on this here. So let's create some code. Hero HTML item plus equals and this is going to be a button what else is it type button class everything the same ah the only difference is it's gonna have a data target okay so I've done some editing here I've used single quotes inside of the double quotes. The data target will open up the modal. The last thing we need to do is put in an edit me button and then the close tag. Okay, there's one more thing that I forgot to do is the data hyphen toggle. So let's put that back in there, data hyphen toggle. And that equals a modal. The data target equals the edit hero command. Okay, that looks like we're ready to delete this button here. And let's save the changes and go back to our original page, refresh it, and let's run it. Now I've got these edit commands coming up here, so I click on edit me, and sure enough, the modal pops up. So it doesn't populate the individual items, but at least we have buttons that are responding to clicks. That's a good start. Now we have to create a button listener actually that will check when one of these buttons is clicked and then it will populate the field of every item on the edit form. So before we do that I'm going to change the uh, class name here. It's set it edit hero and I want to make sure I remember what this is so I'm going to call it edit hero button. And let's create a listener for this and it's a class so it's going to be one listener for every button on the page. So just like we had an issue with the delete hero function and it has to be uh, set on this document listener, we're going to do the same thing for our guy here, the uh, uh, edit hero button. So document dot on click. And then the uh, click that we're looking for is edit hero button. And let's see, what do we do next? We do a function parentheses, brackets, and then the closed parentheses. So it's going to look like that. Okay, so let's test to see if this thing is actually being clicked on. So I'm going to do a console.log and I'm going to say edit button clicked. And uh, let's just save the changes. Okay, let's go back to our main page and let's do the refresh. Let's click on edit button. The dialog box shows up and in the console log I have edit button clicked. So I know that both the modal con connection is working as well as a listener so we can program things in the button. Okay, so what do we want to do in here? Now here's the catch. We need to set the properties of every item in our edit form and make them match the current value of our guy that we just clicked. For instance, how do I get the hero name? So the current hero name that I just clicked, how do we get that? So let's think a minute for where could we get the information if we chose edit and we want to populate the hero name. So we got the hero name listed right up here and, and his name is Jim. So if I click here, I want to get the, uh, the parent and then the object that has the, uh, the name in it. So let's go back and look at our code to see how we might be able to find that. So here is the code that we've uh, created this list on. So I have a name and then inside this span I have person name. 
let's uh, let's create an, uh, a class name for this thing um, instead of just span let's say class equals I'm gonna say this is hero data name and so that way we know that whatever's inside of this span is the name Jim so let's uh, let's add some classes to the rest of these so we can use them in our function Okay, so you see that I added a class associated with every one of these things. So take a minute, check your typing, and update your code so that we can use this now in our uh, next function. Now there's also an issue that we have to fix here. Notice the div at the beginning of this section does not include our buttons at the bottom. So I'm going to change this div at the ending and move it to the bottom of this section. So cut this out and put it down below. That way the buttons fit inside of the entire group. It'll make it easier when we get to our coding with uh, trying to identify which button has been clicked. So let's add, our, add on to our HTML code with a plus equals and just put the uh, closing div tag here. So here's how this works. So we go to the hero name and we're going to first of all take the ID of this button, go get the parent, and then we're going to search for anything that has the class of, uh, what was it, hero data name. And we'll give it the text value of that. So let's go and reset that form now. So we want to set the form to the value of um, whatever this hero name is. So what is the form's ID for the name field. So let's go look on our edit modal and we see that the item for hero name is called edit input hero name. So let's copy that and let's go back to our listener on the edit button. Okay so we're going to put in the ID and set the value to hero name. So let's see what happens here. Let's save it and let's refresh the page and when we click on edit me Gandalf shows up as my hero and let's go and check out Jim Jim shows up as the hero's name as well okay so this is going to require uh, changing data for every one of these uh, field items so I'm gonna type this kind of fast All right, so I've done all of the uh, checking on all the IDs. So this code here supposedly works. We've got ourselves a uh, updated for every item in our um, edit controls. And uh, a couple of them have a little bit of odd behavior. So the sliders and the selectors need to have a change function following the value replacement. So the, um, the checkbox is a little different they have a property of true false so if the variable comes out to be a string equals true then we can change the attribute of the checkbox to be checked true or checked false so I don't know why they don't just use values for checkbox but that's the way that HTML was designed so let's check this let's save it and let's go into our code and refresh the page I'm going to go do a test on Gary. Gary is Cyclops Ferreter 31. He's got different items. Edit me, and sure enough, it looks like the form is filled out correctly. So in the next video, we're going to update the button at the bottom, so that way when somebody changes a value and they update the uh, settings, it will create a change in the database.